Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So this afternoon, I had the pleasure of talking to Jan over at Tesla Fix on his YouTube channel. He said he was going to upload the video this Sunday. So his channel will be linked below if you wanna go check him out and subscribe. He's had Alexander on, he's had Farzad on, and he's just a delightful guy overall. So his channel is below. On X, Rohan Patel said they had a Cybertruck at the recent EPA event when they made the announcement public. No surprise, he said it stole the show. He also said the EPA has always been fair to Tesla. That has not always been true of all parts of the government in this administration or previous administrations either. This was what Rohan was quote posting from Robert. Here's how much the Democrats hate Elon. For today's EPA EV announcement, they had four cars on stage. One from GM, one from Chrysler, two from Ford, zero from Tesla. Listen, are certain parts of the government against Elon and Tesla? Absolutely, but at the end of the day, this really boils down to a UAW situation and the administration really just catering to the donor base. This morning, Tesla released Auto Park for vision only vehicles. So far, no official word on if and when this will roll out to USS vehicles too. No customers have this feature yet. So far, it's employees only. Elon has been touting big improvements here as the new Auto Park is expected to use the same neural nets that power version 12. Tesla's auto park has been a feature now for a few years, but for a long time it was not available to cars that did not have the ultrasonic sensors. Then trying to cover the gap in features, Tesla released the high fidelity park assist, and now that is still limited to only vehicles without ultrasonic sensors or vision only, but Tesla is working on adding that to vehicles with the ultrasonic sensors. The prior iteration of auto park would only show one parking spot at once, and sometimes even that wouldn't populate. With the new version, it looks like it could display various parking spots at once, including parallel spaces. The prior auto park was also pretty slow. If anybody was around, it was almost unusable. Back in December, Elon was touting tap to park where eventually you'll be able to choose a parking spot, get out of the car, and then let the car park without you in it. For right now though, with this version, that does not appear to be a feature yet. There's also currently some chatter that you may be able to initiate auto park directly from your phone in the future. Auto park is an enhanced autopilot feature, so you would need that or full self-driving to have this feature. Based on all the data we have right now, it sounds like this feature could roll out to customer cars and exit the testing phase in April. I'm not sure how this will work for the SNX as the visualizations are on the screen that you can't touch right now, so maybe they move them to the center UI for this one. It may be nothing, but in the release notes right after shift to reverse, it has the trademark R. Heinrich Zane shared an insightful update on Tesla semi production. There were two lines spanning the narrow length of the leased building. This is a fairly short assembly line. I'm guessing there were maybe five or six stations. I think it's important to talk about the supply chain for the Tesla semi. And as it is today, the vast majority of the Tesla semi is built is currently built using supplier parts. Tesla currently builds at least the plaid motors, the attached inverters, the world-class heat pump, the battery packs, albeit with 2170 cells that are sourced from either Panasonic or LG, and the two screens that are we're familiar with in every Tesla. And in the semi, there's two of them. They may build wiring harnesses, seats, steering wheels, and a few other components. Everything else relies on suppliers, and the supply chain may have been a big reason for the generally consensus slow assembly production of the prototype line up to the, the number that were delivered to Pepsi and to, Tepsi, to Tesla itself. Tesla doesn't want to order large volumes until the design is mature. Between now and the high volume production, I think it's very likely that Tesla could could reinitiate the um, prototype production line, and rather than having two, they could easily add three, four, or five, and then end up producing a modest number of Tesla semis well before the um, production the high volume building is ready and, and ramped. There's a chance as Tesla finalizes the design for the semi and builds out the supply chain that they may make between 500 or 1,000 semis 
before we have the new site finishing construction for the more high volume production. That would of course be a very logical step for Tesla to go through at least one more round of production at the current site with any of the changes it's wanted to implement from the feedback from Pepsi. Do some more lower volume test production for the next six to 12 months and then hopefully have that new factory ready for a final design and higher volume by early 2025. Senator Warren has renewed calls on the SEC to investigate whether Tesla ran afoul of regulations governing board independence at public companies. In a letter sent this week, she expressed concern about the potential conflicts of interest between Tesla and the private companies Elon runs, including X. She did the exact same thing last summer, so she's back at it again, this time saying there's new evidence that's emerged in recent months that deepen her concerns that Tesla's board lacks independence from Elon. She also questioned Tesla's decision to advertise on X. I think most of us here are up to speed on Senator Warren and her antics, but in case you're not, this video will tell you everything you need to know. If you want to know how corrupt legacy media has become and how it really is all about the clicks, have a look at this. I mean, seriously, of all the incredible things Elon is doing for our generation and future ones, the media has 91 different sources that decided to hop on the Elon takes ketamine story. I also find it pretty interesting that many of these sources are actually owned by the Walt Disney Company. I can see all of these sources in one place with tags showing factuality and the ownership thanks to Ground News, the sponsor of this video. It's a website and an app developed by a NASA engineer to highlight the bias distribution and political affiliation of each source based on ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. With Ground News, you can create your own custom list, and yes, I have one for Tesla and Elon. I have to say, Ground News is top tier for cutting through political noise, especially during an election year, which I think is going to be wildly important. This alone makes Ground News a company I'm happy to promote, whether they sponsor the channel or not. I'd highly encourage you go check out their election page. You can see all of the candidates and all of the latest latest breaking news with all of the political bias for each source. You can head to ground.news slash electrified linked below to get 40% off unlimited access to the Vantage plan, which is what I use. Or if it's easier, you can use the QR code right on the screen. I have to say, there's been a lot of you that have reached out to me and left comments about how thankful you are that I've mentioned Ground News. So if you're somebody that has not yet checked them out, it might be worth a look. Tesla made a few changes to the referral program, one of which is as a buyer, you now get three months of FSD plus one year of free premium connectivity. It's still just for the model S, X, and Y. There's now a cyber hammer available by redemption only, 35,000 credits, only 800 will be made. It's made of steel, and this is a laser etching of Franz's name. For now, not available in Canada. This one was up briefly, but I believe it's already taken back down the ability to again accelerate your Cybertruck delivery for 30,000 credits. On the Tesla insurance website for the safety score, they have now updated a new version 2.1 from 2.0. The new version 2.1 has a more accurate assessment of your future collision risk based on over 30 billion miles of driving data, all they've really changed was the night hours before it started at 10 p.m. and went to 4 a.m. Now it starts at 11 p.m. and goes to 4 a.m. More mileage in that late night window will harm your score, so now that the window's a bit smaller, that should help safety scores. Unfortunately though, that's the only change. No update to the forward collision warnings, which many people would tell you needs an update. Nice find here by Electric Felix. I believe the world's first Tesla fast charging hardware operated by a third party. 
In this case, that third party is EV Point in the UK. Looks like at least eight bays in Utoxeter in the UK. Yes, these are open to all vehicles, including Tesla owners, and they're up to 250 kilowatts because again, these do not yet have the V4 cabinets, just the V4 dispensers. As of right now, it's not clear if this station will show up in the Tesla UI, in the app, or in the car. I found this image of one of the signs at the EV Point site, and yes, this does have have Tesla's plug-in charge for Tesla users. For everybody else, it's tap to pay, and then they do accept payment methods on site as well. It looks like EV Point has beat BP to the punch because late last year, BP announced they were spending $100 million on Tesla superchargers, and I went to see if they have deployed any yet. I could not find a thing anywhere online, but they did say originally the plan was to start deployment in 2024. Just for this site, one user was saying the cost is 65 pence per kilowatt hour, which is roughly 82 cents. So they're saying it's a bit more expensive than Tesla Direct, but more affordable than some other third party offers. RJ Quote posted a video on X saying great collaboration with the Tesla team. It was a video of a Rivian vehicle charging at a Tesla supercharger, and it shows both screens displaying the cost in real time of the charging session. The Sheriff's Department released some new information about the tragic Angela Chow death that recently happened in a Model X vehicle. They released today that she was indeed drunk at the time of the accident. Her BAC was nearly three times the legal limit of 0.08, hers was 0.233. There's a good reason people always say don't drink and drive, and with Tesla and autonomy developing, I would still say do not drink and supervise. I can't vouch for this account on X, but they said an unnamed North American EV maker has begun inviting global media to test drive its ludicrous model. Exciting driving experiences are about to arrive to the world. All of the rumors and the timelines are starting to come together, so in the next few weeks, we may have a release of content and the availability of the Model 3 Ludicrous. It's been spotted testing in a few different places over the past week, including most recently this time in Florida. Fun fact about the new Model 3, the badging on the back going from the Tesla T to the word Tesla was actually to pay homage to the original Roadster. That coming directly from Franz in one of his recent interviews that was just posted to Weibo. On Friday, March 22nd, Tesla is going to be hosting a live event answering everybody's questions on the Model Y starting at 12 p.m. Pacific time. My burning Model Y question, when Juniper? The European Auto Manufacturers Association just released its monthly data and I think it's being misinterpreted. In February, battery electric cars held a market share of 12%, which was stable year over year, while the hybrid electric cars captured around 29%. Looking at battery electric registrations year to date, so January and February, Germany is still the biggest market with 49.9 thousand, but France is closing the gap with 45.8 thousand. Year over year, France is up 33.9%, while Germany is down 1.3%. Belgium has actually vaulted into the third spot with 19.4 thousand registrations, up 71.8 2% year over year. In fourth, we have the Netherlands just over 17,000, and then Sweden rounds out the top five at 10.1 thousand. And then listed separately from the EU, we have the UK at 35.9 thousand. Here's the breakdown by manufacturer, and we'll just focus on January and February, the column on the right, for the year over year change. Scrolling down to Tesla, here's where people may be misinterpreting this data. When it comes to market share for January and February of 23, it was 1.8%. Over the same time this year, it's now 2.3%. So on the surface, that's great. It's also true that in terms of the number of registrations, Tesla has grown 40.7% year over year. There's a few things to keep in mind with data like this. It is true, Berlin was shut down for two weeks given the Red Sea disruptions, and because of that, the exports from Shanghai did indeed take longer. But perhaps the biggest thing that's throwing this data off is Tesla's unwinding of the delivery wave. In March of last year, they still had a significant part of their deliveries for quarter one 
hit in March. Since Tesla has been unwinding that wave now for the past year or so, they're making more deliveries in January and February. That means the March data for this year is likely to flatten out fairly significantly compared to last year. My point is just because the January and February comp looks good does not mean the entire first quarter is going to look nearly as good. There were other factors across the EU like the incentives abruptly ending and the Model 3 Plus change over, but just some things to keep in mind when you're looking at this data. I thought it was important to clarify that, sure, although the first two months are looking good for all of these regions, let's not get over our skis here as March will most likely bring us back down to earth and overall, Q1 is still going to be a tough quarter. I saw the Tesla bot journal on X point this out. Tesla has a job posting for the Tesla bot that says, they're looking for somebody to drive the deployment of robots for trial applications. They'll work daily with design engineering, infrastructure, manufacturing, and operations teams to identify and execute pilot applications of humanoid robots in various manufacturing environments. Work will cover multiple job sites and may require frequent travel. In this role, they'll actually be overseeing the trials themselves. They'll also ensure manufacturing lines are validated and or restored to prior condition post trial. Tesla filling this job posting could easily still be three plus months away, but we're moving along. Autoline Network was able to get some video from Caresoft to actually beat Monroe to the punch when it comes to the Cybertruck teardown. Caresoft did confirm that not all of the Cybertruck has moved to 48 volts. There are still some circuits that are on 12 volts. They didn't elaborate very much, but things like interior ambient lights wouldn't really need 48 volts. We had this account on X sharing a Chinese news source that I went ahead and put through a translator. The word is about 50 BYD car owners were going to an event to kind of protest and talk about BYD quality. The report is saying that BYD actually shut those users' cars down so they could not make it to the event. They said BYD remotely controlled these vehicles as a result, only a few cars out of the original 50 arrived. I'd certainly put this in the speculative category, but I thought it was something interesting to keep in mind when it comes to more and more vehicles being connected. In case you or anyone you know may be interested in leasing a Rivian vehicle, they have some new offers starting at $559 a month that does include the $7,500 tax credit. Rivian also announced this week their leases are now available in 24 states, up from just 15 previously. Tesla stock closed the day at $172.82, down 1.62%, while the NASDAQ was up 0.2%. Another very low volume day for Tesla, trading about 24 million shares below the average 30-day volume. Don't forget, check out Ground News linked below if you want to support their mission. I'm telling you i think it's the best tool out there for cutting through the political noise hope you guys have a wonderful day please like the video if you did you can find me on x linked below and a huge thank you to all of my patreon supporters